the mega logai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk in the cherishing and the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Being elected by the grace of the Lord our God to do only His good will and good pleasure on this earth. For which cause the entire chapter of Psalms 22 being dedicated for us, ranging from verse number 22 till to the verse number 32, and teaching for us that a generation will come. And that generation being the church age. And to be more specific in the exposition of Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 7. The Hebrew word Ariats. Or Arits. Where we have been given much and the greatest and the highest and the best privilege. Not only just to trample Satan under our feet. <laughs> but to rule with tyranny over it because of the powerful plethora of Baltimore privileges ever given for us in the church age. To such cause, Satan knows very well. If you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. If you have been given to learn and to understand, that we are the people of the generation where our Lord our God has chosen us through the church age, demanding every believer to be scribe, making every believer to kneel down and write the Bible at least once in their entire life. And if they would know with proper exposition of the pastor teacher teaching in them, this great infallible and inerrant word of the Lord our God with proper isagogic categories and exegesis, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations, every believer would be not only just a king, but he would be like Christ. As our Lord our God said, through Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God. It is better for the slave to be like the master. And it's enough if he is like the master. And how Apostle Paul teaches for us, to live is Christ, to die is profitable. It is no longer who I live, but Christ who lives in me. This simple, strategy what many men are not able to follow have ruined and messed up their lives by not realizing that this church where our Lord our God is the universal church for us and this church of God constantly has an unsleeping fear or enemy this unsleeping enemy began to attack 
in the very earliest moments of the history from the first century. First by persecution from without, then and more successfully today by teaching false doctrines of seduction and corruption from within. Why Satan wants not to teach to you the truth? Because Satan knows very well that our Lord of God said that is going to rise up an alien army, an army which shall squeeze you, the army wherewith we are made little lower than the angels to judge these fallen angels. The army more than Ezekiel 37 chapter could describe the church age army. The baseless things where they couldn't know the way how they have to worship that Yahweh El Elyon Elohim Yet in Christ they have been prayed that they will keep his word and they have kept thy word. Therefore the daily process of no rezo, exposition of the word to declare. Where with Christ our Lord our God prayed for us. That we shall be declared still. And this great process of declaring through the bona fide gift of the male spiritual pastor teacher. And that's how Satan knows very well when our Lord of God could establish the church, the gates of hell cannot prevail over it. And therefore it wants to seduce and corrupt from within. It wanted to attack upon the Bible and the wrath and the one who prepared the Bible, the content of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but it couldn't succeed. Because it knows very well it cannot prevail. By the grace of the Lord of a God, over 1600 years of journey, Bible being composed into our hands in our own languages that we could read and write, the 15th or 16th eleven of KJV King James Version. And from 1441 BC till to 1611, the ups and downs where Bible should not come in our hands, even in my country, India, if it were not William Carey who could make his vision to come, where he could write a book and carry to the obligations where the heathens are without knowing my Christ. If he wouldn't have made his time to look upon us by the grace of the Lord our God, even we Indians wouldn't have known. But the great reformation movement which began by Martin Luther and when we could celebrate 500 years of reformation at the Bible is not been read by millions of people in the percentage wise no matter however the Christendom has many Christians the nominal Christians the professing Christians the Christians who do not carry their cross every day and follow my Christ. The Christians where the pastor teachers are just entering into the pulpits to say for the lustful patterns of their roles in nature, their deeds, their activities, their works. But they aren't aware that every day they have to teach Bible doctrine with proper exegesis, isagogics and categories. And if you go back and look the percentage of them, it's nearly 98%. And you could hardly find 2% of the people who are really interested to know what the Bible says. And the sad part, what we look today in our Christendom, the many variety of translations, particularly the English. Looking upon all of these translations, the King James Version still stands good. For the men who are not interested to go back and look in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic what the Bible says exactly. What does it mean to say in the original Hebrew? What does it mean to say in the original Greek? What does it mean to say with proper exegesis of the exposition of the word? 
and those who don't follow that exposition of the word and those who rely upon the translations for example even KJV doesn't stand good but in comparison to the present standards of translations something better might be NASB New American Standard Version Bible and apart from that if you go back and look the filth of these translations certainly makes our heart to be mourning and weeping. What is the infallible and inherent word of the Lord our God in the original languages of the scriptures? What it has to be the foundations in our pulpits, not being captured by the so-called kleptes, lustes, mestotes, tupas, or by the canapes, tiflos, sharuras, oriented minded one pastors who have come for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, who have made their belly to be their God, and who are thinking this translation will be good, that translation will be good, and absolutely defiling the Lord's word. And that's how Satan loves to seduce you and corrupt your mind. And in fact, indeed, rather than those who lay down their life to the flock, the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers whose bona fide duty to the Lord of a God, which they are answerable when they go back home, to say Acts chapter 20 verses 24 through 32 and to tell them we have not sent to declare the entire counsel of the Lord of our God therefore they are pure so that we are pure from the head so that the blood what they have been intending could be upon their own head the attack upon the church by this unsleeping fio, our enemy, knows that a time is short. But yet we the Christians are not able to know that our time is short. And the burden laid down upon our shoulders from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 to preach daily is huge and large. But it is, don't, don't worry, it is not we that we are going to carry that burden, it is Lord of God through us because of the joint partaker, the paraclete guide, our mentor, our leader, our guide. In the time of Sunani Lambonanai, it is you who is going to carry our load, our burden. But we should be the vessel sanctified and kept apart for his will. Because we are the alien ones, says Hezekiel 28.7. To pull down the wisdom and the understanding of Satan, as Second Corinthians writes for us. When our obedience is ready, we shall pull down the high standards of other knowledges where they think they are great. But if our obedience is not ready, that is daily preparation and growing up to be the Lord's mind every day, then how you could ever pull down Therefore, we the alien ones who love to squeeze day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Satan under our feet for the power given to us, what we bind on the earth will be bound in the heaven, what we bound, what we release on this earth, the same thing will be released in the heaven. And Satan knows very well these church age believers are far superior. This church age believer are the chosen generation for the Lord of a God. This church age believers, though it has an unsleeping for you, and no matter how ever it wanted to corrupt the Bible as well, those who abide in the original languages of the scriptures, they will be absolute standardized pillars. And since it is the gift of the Lord of a God to make you every believer a scribe, 
to make it to get free from the filth of the translation for the first time what you write in whichever language you go through making you to write the second time in the Hebrew Greek and Aramaic that's called as interlinear learning the importance that you have been free from the filth and making you to realize the third time when we write again in the Hebrew Greek and Aramaic of the original word and learn the importance of it then never you will rely upon KJV, never you will rely upon NASB in fact indeed so worst are the translations when we find to expound one verse Psalms 16.5 giving the replacement of the right word in the terms of their own transliterational meanings and leaving out the essence of it what we can find in the original Hebrew and no matter how they may be accurate in some passages no matter how matter great they may be in some passages but the complete revealed thought for us in the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic they alone stand good it may be of voices of having some significance or some translations to have some significance but it is not the blowing of the trumpet so that you could be made ready for this ongoing battle not seen therefore dear brethren every breath you take be sure to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit make sure that you're walking in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit learn to realize that which is of a blame that which is of a blind one that which is of a lame one is not been acceptable to the presence of the Lord of a God as our living sacrifice and that which is of a blame not being using rebound and getting back into the fellowship of the Lord of a God to learn Bible doctrine not able to go back and look at the original languages of the scriptures but rather exposing them and thinking that this could be the order of the day the lame one is the one where you can think not walking every day in the presence of the Lord of a God in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit though we have been said in Ephesians 5.18b to be filled with the Spirit and in Galatians 5.15 and 16 and followed by 25 and 26 if ever you live that's what your life it has to be the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and if you live in the Spirit then you shall peripatao in the Spirit but writing for us in Galatians 5.25 I zoma pneumati pneumati kaistai o khan if ever you live in the peripatao it is no longer in the peripatao work of pneuma but you are going to walk in the marching ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit so I can So you are I Zoman. Your true spiritual life. If it is in the pneumati, that's the spirit of the Lord of a God. Then in the spirit of the Lord of a God, you shall march, not just walk. The great prayer for us in Ephesians 1 17, which teaches to us all the time. The understanding of your eyes to be enlightened, to look, to seek, to search, and to realize. What a great calling we have in the Lord. What a great purpose we are in the Lord. What a great ministry we have in the Lord. Not only to be in the peripatao of the wisdom of the Spirit. But furthermore he goes and also the copulatory conjunction Kai where he uses to say apocalypti apinosis and that apocalypti apinosis is marching in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit but you haven't come to walk in the wisdom of the Lord of a God in the spirit how we could march 
for the Apocalypti revelation of the Lord of full knowledge. Therefore, Satan knows very well you have been called not just to live a legal life, moral life, getting out from the filth of this world where they have been there in this world. In the terms of the thinking, to say that we are pious, we are legal, we are this, we are that. We are morally perfect, we are morally good and we are preparing you for to have your mental furniture to be absolutely true and perfect. To say comparison to unbelievers, you should be like this, you should be like that. and molding you to modify the deeds of your flesh every day and say this could be the pattern, that could be the better pattern and causing you to walk not according to the Bible doctrine but according to the prince of the power of this air where Satan also blinded them in Ezekiel 27 not to look how they have been destroyed by the descendants of Shamam and Japhat, for which cause our Lord of God has chosen them to be the praise of this glory. And the descendants of Ham, who were in my country, India, the ivory task of the elephant, the way how it will be, like mannerisms of that many people have been developing their standards of reality in the terms of morality in the terms of i dotes or daimonian idotes in the terms of gold silver copper wood and stone And they are rising up their masks. But in Christ we have been called in the fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, to look. Though the world has been blinded, we are of Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, before the foundation of the world, and we are the aliens ones to this people, where they can never truly understand what is the great ministry we have in this church age. Therefore, Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 7 teaches to us in comparison to Psalms chapter 22 what is our true life in this battle of Eon. Therefore, we are dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer. Every breath that you take, it has to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Without being in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, no matter what, never you will realize. Though such kind of a great calling is ours in the church age, the such kind of a great ministry which is ours in the church age to squeeze and to absolutely make them to crush though we have been said in Amos 3 7 not the people of their choice but at in Ephesians 1 according to the pre council will of the Lord our God according to the Eudakia, the well-pleasing will of the Lord God the Father. He has paid even every ordinary one in the church age to be the choice of His glory. Every ordinary one. And that belongs to us. In spite of all your physical ailments, the hunchback, the six fingers, or whatever you could realize. The broken testicles, the leprosy, or the people who are despair and having no hope. By seeking and searching and going along in all mannerism of the cults of the religions. When they would come to my Christ, they have been sanctified and kept apart to the Lord of a God for their work. 
and people may think we are promoting religion no neither we are making to tell anyone to come and convert and to be in Christ we are showing you the way this is the way of eternal salvation believe or you don't believe that's left to you the greater confidence what you have in your guards you have it during the time of Elijah it was on the Mount Carmel it was been proved that there is only one Lord of a God not the Baal God neither the Kali what they could 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 get now into these terms that time Baal the present time Kali they should truly understand that time it was a manifestation for them they couldn't have the completed canon of scripture to show forth the power of the Lord of a God but this time it's like a cold war no longer the manifestation of the power of the Lord of Agar to be shown for you except in few cases where he miraculously works his will but on the other half he says the people to whom I have given this word to unsheathed the sword of Rima declaration what they have to take every day and the people are who we the church hey and we the people getting into the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit day by day and walking in the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath could certainly lead and cause many people to believe upon this true Lord for that cause he calls us that we are the light of and salt of this earth for that cause Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2 14 and 15 among the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations be sure that you take care of the word of the Lord our God in your midst and not run in laboring your vain but rather run in grace through the word of the Lord our God and for that cause he has made not the exposition like the manifestation of Elijah attack upon Baal killing of 850 false prophets but now you, you are enough because for you everything has been given you cannot have your alibis to rise you cannot have your excuses to tell you cannot plead your ignorance to say you have only one thing in the Lord use rebound, be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit day by day learn Bible doctrine and show forth to this world the way of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that's where Satan comes into play it is constantly our unsleeping fear it doesn't want the believers to learn Bible doctrine if ever they believe in the Lord the first strategy of it to see that they should not believe in my Christ if ever they believe in the Lord see the second strategy they don't grow up in the word of the Lord our God day by day in every mannerism of things what you take dear brethren Christ our Lord our God is so unique and specific whether you believe it or not the work of evangelism he made it for the department of evangelism the work of pastor teacher like the way how a pediatrician doctor should be he made for it though there may be unbelievers who believe in my Lord by the work of an evangelism and the right honesty of that evangelical work pastor should be or evangelical brethren should be to give them to the churches where they have been daily fed in the word of the Lord of a God because someone plants someone pours the growth is in the hand of the Lord of a God says 1 Corinthians 3 but these people don't let go the unbelievers to come to the right Bible doctrine because they get feared that they're going to lose their income and money we are not here to take a part business for us we are dealing to the kingdom of the Lord of a God We are here to do that which is right and perfect in the sight of the Lord's will. It is not I, it is not you, it is not of Paul, it is not of Apollo, saith our Lord our God, it is for Christ. To edify the believers to reach perfect knowledge, the thorough knowledge, the complete knowledge. And to make them to understand the importance of the original languages of the scriptures. and train them up to the praise of his glory to fight a great fight in this battle of Neon 
being formed like aliens those who squeeze and crush off why we are aliens Romans chapter 11 describes for us that we are a wild olive plant and that he has engrafted us through Christ in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that we should do the works that could meet and to God the Father in heaven and could produce the fruit that could be standing to the God the Father in heaven and people looking at us they should glorify God the Father in heaven saying that these are the children of God the Father in heaven and yet we don't love to do that neither we are interested to do that let what may come I won't let go the people who are converted into my evangelism work they themselves are not able to enter into the specialization of Bible doctrine the sophisticated spiritual life neither they will make the convertees to come if you would look dear brethren if anyone would be having to share the burden it will be better for them to give their own burden rather than taking the disciples for us or making them disciples through them do you know the humble reason why it is because we are accountable for your growth why we are giving a series of discourse for more than one hour every day those are listening those are subscribers of around 61 I think whether they listen to it or not to whom our Lord our God has designed and kept these tapes will be for them but we have to give it thoroughly and completely and in this series of discussions what we are going to give you purely in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit is to see your perfection so that you should stand perfect and complete in the presence of the Lord our God being holy being blameless as is holy so we ought to be holy being sanctified and kept apart for making known the world to realize that we are separated we have been kept apart looking at us they should say yes these are the Christians not we wear a cross and the people could tell that he is a Christian and since we have been kept apart to be holy and blameless he has made us to be unreproachable irreproachable above reproach and now you could be presented above reproach if you're not coming to learn Bible doctrine in the special agnos of my labor of the pastor teacher who teaches in Colossians 1 24 to 26 the sufferings that he could pay to the church at least some part of his life and since the time has been segmented by man to consider seconds and hours and since the Bible recognizes only half a basis as we read in Revelation as well yet they repented not though they have been given a space of time from hour to a week a month and a an year yet they did not repent and what a great pain it will be that these men are not able to come back and look the season of the time which you are going through the Kairos moments in this chronological time every second in this 24 hours where the word of the Lord of God teaches for us to understand every breath if you're not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit then your enemy like a roaring lion is waiting for you to be taken out and yet the people are not able to change therefore dear brethren we are not so we are of the Lord our God Here we find in Revelation 9:15 an hour basis, a daily basis, a monthly basis, and a yearly basis. Even that hour, when our Lord our God could say for us, one day in the presence of the Lord our God is thousand years. 
than the time without getting graduated in the word of the Lord of a God day by day basis. And not able to meet his calling standards. The agape in love, where he says in 1 John 4 15, if you don't abide in his love. The agape in love is not what you come and give, it is what the Lord of a God demands through his word. And he wants everyone to be perfect and complete. He wants everyone to partake in Ezekiel 28 7 battle. And he wants to pull down every thought that goes against the knowledge of the Lord of a God when our obedience is ready. And at least coming every day and preaching for you for one hour. Even this will be so small in the presence of that eternity plan of the Lord of a God that we are wasting our time. We couldn't make an effective use of it. What does he what does he remember what does he need from you, says the scripture? He has created in his righteousness. Let's pay back the homage in righteousness, not your things pertaining to your sacrifice, not your things pertaining to your money, not your things pertaining to your all mannerism of costly gifts. He requires your humble heart, a contrite spirit. He requires that which is so great for us to understand your brethren trembling at every word of his mouth. Teaching as man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord God Almighty. Trembling at his word, what a privilege it would be to tremble. And do you think he requires from you the 98% of the Christians of nominal professional ones or professing ones your weekly time is enough but weekly is not mentioned in the Bible earlier without looking we could say weekly but it is not it's hour basis daily basis monthly basis and yearly basis weekly the first week of the day they would come to break the bread the Lord's plan for us is daily because time is short. The battle and the work that has been set before us is so huge. Without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand the tactics or the cunning fables of this unsleeping fear. And yet what we are doing today in the Christendom, dear brethren, not and never seeking the truth seeking to show what the man pleases. But this great army, then the army of Ezekiel 37, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being abiding in us, in this flesh, that great trinity of the Lord our God in our flesh. Doesn't you read Daniel chapter 2, when he says, the spirit which doesn't dwell in the flesh abides in them, therefore they are very great and unique. But today in the church age, though it says for us at the moment of salvation, by faith alone in Christ alone, you have been made the temple of the Lord of our God. The Trinity of the Lord of our God dwells in us, and if we love one another by doing the will of God the Father according to his agape and will, even he dwells in us. And when he dwells in us, then we have to meet the standards of him. We have to learn the standards of his word. We have to realize what is the purpose of his will. And Ezekiel 28, 7 will give you the character of that. When we expound it in the original Hebrew, you will truly understand of what greater life it is that our Lord of our God has chosen and kept. And yet, in the old sin nature activities, we are letting it go. And in fact, indeed, some at least haven't even realized what is the true purpose in the Lord our God being chosen and called for his work. We shall have a word of prayer and look. That which is quite essential for us to learn and to seek and to search. Diligently to know why we have been kept alive in this church age. We shall have a word of prayer. Not to fear the unsleeping fear but to fear the time that we are spending 
though it is of a short span of time, whether it is purely in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit of the Lord of our God or not, or we are battling in the air. For that reason, we say, make sure every breath, not only just in the tower, of, in the in the hour of the time when we come to teach you the word, but make it a practical life at every breath of your life being called in the Lord. Your practical thinking, your practical exposition, and realizing the great calling in the Lord. Because every breath, every breath, every breath is accountable. Even the millionth of a second for you, it's accountable. And why do you want to let go to the things pertaining to this earth so carelessly? We are not just talking about the moral standards of your perfection. If you are a Christian, before you could become a Christian, remember, your old life has been dead and buried in Christ. And the witness of it, the thing that you take called as water baptism. But in the Lord of a God, realizing to take water baptism, not for your marriage, not for XYZ trends, not for your certificates. But the way how Ethiopian eunuch was, the way how Apostle Paul was. Because Apostle Paul says, I follow Christ, you look unto me and imitate follow, imitate and follow me. The purpose of us cleaving with all the things with our heart to the Lord our God to get him the praise and glory. And then itself when you take the baptism, dear brother, and you're saying that you're taking the responsibilities of this great kingdom of Christ. You are a saint, you are a warrior. You are a great soldier to the Lord. And soldier is of no value if he doesn't been trained in the proper mannerism of him to be alert all the time of thinking. In every mannerism of pressure he has to be alert. He has to know how to use his sword. He has to be trained. And if he hasn't been trained, never he will wake up. Therefore, dear brethren, for this great cause, the soldier, though you have been named, you have to be alert. And since you have been made a soldier in the Lord, you should know the responsibilities kept upon you, the king and the priest. Zechariah 6, 9-13, what will be the future of my Christ? He expounds us right now in the church age. The prototype if he is the model the prototype to teach that we shall be the kings and the priesthood given for us by the confession of every time when our use rebound and the king's work Deuteronomy 17 18 to become the scribes fulfilled in Psalms 22 verses 22 through 26 and he says in verse number 30, I shall recount the name against Safa. And what a great privilege it is for us that we the church age believers have been called to be the Safa, the scribes. The same thing in the Gospel of Matthew, our Christ of Lord of God discourse, every scribe being instructed. He doesn't call any other mannerism, but he says first you become the scribe, write down the Bible, and from there on you become the adult son. Become the son of Tekton, every day growing up in the grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, and from there you become to grow up. It is something for you to be a king till you could reach the age of maturity to certainly assert or make yourself to assert that kingship in practical life to enjoy it, to understand it, to know the responsibilities of it. That is very far better. And when you are a kid, you cannot understand them. Therefore, the word says for us to grow from kid, to eat bread, from bread to eat strong meat. It's very, very different for us. But these people don't understand. And they want to teach what? Purity, morality, your tithes, coming to church. From where we have to be in the church, from where we have fallen. 
what the pulpits have to be taught every day, but what they are teaching. And being not aware about the cunning fables of Satan, yet you teach morality, legalism. There cannot be anything great pain than this. That though much is given for us in the church age, though we are aliens and he qualified us to crush and to squeeze Satan out of our feet every breath. Yet we are not able to realize our worth. We shall have a word of prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we are going to study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. So looking at scale 28, 7, Therefore behold me. The conclusion of what he says continues from verse number 3. Are you wiser than Daniel? Satan cannot be wiser than Daniel, far less it could be wiser than this church church believers. And with the wisdom of it, with understanding of it, it has made itself a great riches and has gotten gold and silver into their treasures. Here right now in the church age, the people don't believe faith alone in Christ alone, the people who don't understand salvation is by that only unique name given for us. No other name in the heaven and the earth given apart from that great name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wherewith you could be saved. They love to increase their gold and silver. That's it. They love to work salvation by their own good works. But Isaiah 64, 6 says, ministers cloth works. Being good to others, doing good works will not save you. Believe in the Lord because your righteousness is of sin. Because when the scripture concludes every human being on this earth being born through the old sin nature of Adam, through the progeny, progeny of him, none are righteous. All have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord of God. That glory refers to the plus R, the absolute standards of his work. And graciously given for us as 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21, that whosoever believes in him, to them this has been accounted. Though we are sinners, yet though he was not a sinner, was made sinner on behalf of us, so that we might get into our account, credited that great righteousness of the Lord's mind. And that he says in Psalm 16:5. He is the portion of my inheritance, what a privilege it is, and of my cup, the osi, the owl. And there we find the portion of inheritance, the two Hebrew words, what we read. It teaches to us to understand the Kairos moments in the chronological time. Though we suffer in the Kairos moments, in comparison to that great eternal weight of glory, this is nothing that we suffer. And therefore he says, the Lord my God is the portion of my inheritance. The portion in the sense when we read in the original Hebrew, it teaches for us to differentiate between the two parts. The Hebrew word portion, what we read is manna, which is nothing but that which belongs, that could be counted as the things pertaining to the chronological time being assigned for every believer on this earth. And the inheritance refers to chalak, which is nothing but for us to understand that great portion which one possesses by the redeeming ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. So this could be called as Kairos moments. So the first portion, manna, refers to the chronological time. Then the inheritance refers to the Kairos time, the time of a quality that you've been redeemed in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 5, 14 through 16. Redeeming your time according to the demands of the word of the Lord of God. So this is called the inheritance, and we find of the cup, and that cup again resembles osi, owl, the things which are not in accord with the Bible doctrine. The owl is your old sin nature, therefore from the old sin nature, no matter however you refine, you love to do the deeds in the terms of gold and silver. 
Give out today the deeds in the terms of which you think they could be applicable in the Lord's mind. But the religion will never understand that where Christianity is far greater than what they think in their good deeds. We have only one divine good deed did in our life. And can't we read in 1 Samuel chapter 6 when we read the milk and a cow incident? Furthermore, when the bottom kept in Obed Om, when they could go back and keep before in that Obed Om in the temple of their gods, no one could stand. It was chopped off. The second, again, they thought it was by fault. Again, they kept before the Ark of the Covenant those images, those, those dead gowns. The second day the hands and the head was being chopped off. The first and second testament of the new of the Bible, what we can go through. But we should be right now in the church age given for us this great privilege the third time, grinding it into powder. That's what the squeezing and crush ministry is all about by these aliens. And the Hebrew word which calls for us not only just the Zur, the aliens, but Ariates, the terrifying ones. Why we have been called as the terrifying ones? Because we have the plural of Baltimore privileges. We have the indwelling mentoring ministry of God, God the Holy Spirit. We have the completed canon scripture. We have everything that this world cannot know if they believe in Christ until and unless. We have the God of hope, we have the God of peace, we have the God of joy. For the wisdom of this world being blinded by Satham or a film coat over their eyes, they may think what we are talking is rubbish. But the Bible doctrine being a spiritual phenomenon it could be understood by them. Who are constantly in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, seeking and searching and performing only the will of God the Father in heaven. What a great ministry we have in the church age. We are not just only the aliens, but Ariats or Arites, the terrifying ones. Therefore, by the gold and silver, says verse number four, the religion world may think that they can gain salvation. They may attain the deeds of the flesh and they can be justified. No. Christ our Lord our God alone said, I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the light of the world. He is alone said, I and the Father are one. No one could tell that. And he said, the one who come through me into the door, they find pasture. Coming and going out, they will find pasture to be fed upon. Not just the details of life, but it's talking about your spiritual life. When you have been fed with the spiritual things, your physical life deeds are nothing. He's going to give you that wisdom so that he directs you every path, how to go, where to go, how to find. And at what do we find every day? Men who seek lies. And I'm referring back not just to the believers because they're already living a life if they're grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, a life of lie. Deceiving Lord God, the Holy Spirit by not seeking for which they have been called in the Lord. But we are talking about those unbelievers who have replaced. Thinking that their guards will help, let them help. Remember the incident of Elijah to look. No gods apart from my Christ. Therefore we find your brethren in the fifth verse. By thy great wisdom thou hast trafficked and has increased the riches. And thine heart has been lifted up with riches. And you have been lifted up because you have made yourself an estate of salvation to think. The images made by man, by thinking of man, could save you and deliver you. 
but how great it is for us through Abraham all the nations will be called as blessed because the way how they followed by faith even we also follow today by faith and when the word of the Lord of God calls for us thy nation shall be called as blessed and through him that we are receiving the salvation by the Jews again there we have problem with Sarah and Hagar the divisions Jacob and Isa again the divisions even as well today John 318 believers and unbelievers the divisions therefore Romans chapter 8 verses 26 and following predestined according to the program is called and the progress and knowledge of the Lord of our God to do his will alone and what a great ministry we have in the church age so here we find because they have made riches our estate of riches to be their security and because you will rise to say that your heart is like the heart of the Lord of a God and that by that we mean Elohim not El Elyon Elohim neither Yehovah Elohim they're calling us only Elohim not neither we are neither we are instigating it as Adonai Elohim just Elohim that's it as God it shines therefore second Corinthians teaches to us the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them and since they teach about things pertaining to the air in fact indeed the so-called Christian believers are also falling to the trap of false teachings in the air like tongues the miracles or the healings the prince of the power of this air loves them to bleat their voices in the air and none to understand what it is therefore dear brethren the concluding verse number seven therefore behold me I will bring just not to bring but bow in the Hebrew it says abide and apply the fact that's why every believer is so unique and Satan constantly wants to divert your mind from the truth which could be taught every day Therefore, our unsleeping Pio wants to absolutely take care of the pulpits by weekly ones, though the Bible says not weekly, daily basis, hourly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. And why till a year, three and a half years, what in the Gospel of Luke, what we read? Praying for you to take, at least this year you will get the fruit, the grace for you. If the Israelites were not been spared for the reason they could not keep 70 sabbatical years, and they went and sent into the captivity of Babylon then every day of your time that has been given to you the portion of chronological time if every day of your time you're not able to redeem the Kairos moments then how much more severe will be our punishment we are not without any excuse dear brethren whether you believe it or not we have been given everything we have been given the completed can of scripture the only thing that fails in you that you are not able to make up your prayer to the Lord of God to send you those bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers who shall train you up day by day in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath word upon word line upon line precept upon precept when they have been trained according to Zephaniah 3 5 when they have been trained according to the terms pertaining to Job 7 17 and 18 when they have been trained day by day Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 through 4 they have to come to teach you the Lord's mind and when they have been trained to teach you in the terms of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 through 4 those 40 years when they walked daily they came to collect the physical manna and today in the church age we are not able to take the spiritual manna isn't it a shame upon our lives in the paraclete guide the only mentoring ministry for us the teacher how much it would be for him being grieved and squelched and lied or deceived and yet he comes again tomorrow because his faithfulness faileth not his mercy is being renewed again tomorrow he comes to teach to you doctrine 
but you say I have my details of the life and I cannot come to doctrine so what what you sow that you will reap don't worry we are not here to ask all the people by begging them but in return we are here to tell look upon your grace before judgment that could fall and don't waste the grace into a lie a batter into lusciousness and learn to do this learn to do and to do and to seek the will of God the Father that's it we are not here for name or fame or denomination or this or that we are here what the Bible says that's it when our Lord our God says do not salute anyone that goes then that's it we need to follow and by that salute we meant to say we are not here to convince you therefore he says behold me I shall call and abide and apply this church age believers on you who are aliens Ephesians 1 4 through 6 who are aliens who have been called before the foundation of the world to do his will and they are not known to the prophets of the Old Testament until the day of Pentecost from the day of 40 when he ascended into heaven the 10 days plan the 50th day coming back again to the church in the form of Lord God the Holy Spirit dwelling in us calling us that you are not of your own being purchased with a great price therefore be aware that you are the temple of that great Lord of our God and demanding in us that since we have been given this great pleasure in the Lord's mind this great pleasure in the Lord's work being indwelling in us this alien ones were not been known to the prophets of the Old Testament therefore they are aliens we are like that wild olive plant being engrafted like aliens and this aliens will crush and squeeze and by that we mean not being related says Amos 3 7 but now in Ephesians 1 4 through 6 he has been related us through Christ and this alien ones are what are yet terrifying ones to be calling in the terms the fearful ones when a man with a Sina demon possession and the herds of that demonic hosts understood that he is the son of the living Lord of a God and they said do not torment us again sending back the time has not yet been appointed they are terrified by his presence the same signifying the fact to the apostles while they walked while their orphans fell many with such demonic possessions were been healed once again teaching for us the importance how it is that terrifying ones we are greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world and why we worry and we have to be the tecton crowd every day abiding in Christ if God be for us who could be against us no open that is formed against thee will ever prosper because for a lot of a God is our mouth he is our righteousness he is our inheritance and why do ever we fear looking seeking searching even the minute details of your life have been fulfilled by the Lord of our God and any time you get any things which is not contrary to the Lord's mind you again get yourself defamed, defied and that's how these people they are not able to realize how terrifying we are to Satan Satan trembles and we have been said to crush Satan under your feet though it is an unsleeping fuel it's a defeated one no power in the stings to spread venom again though it may be like the way beguiling evil nature of Eve 
lest the church also should follow into the beguiling nature of Eve, therefore be alert. And Apostle Paul says, we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan any longer. This great infallible and ignorant word of the Lord our God will qualify us to be the terrifying ones. And it says, to rule like tyranny, and we are powerful. The dunamis power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit says, Romans 15, 13, the God of peace, the God of love. The same commission given for us in Luke chapter 10. You shall trample not only snakes and scorpions, but rather in return, the overall power of Satan will be trampled by your feet. So we are so much powerful. We are mighty in Christ through his word. We are an oppressor for Satan. When he looks at you, he certainly gets absolutely fear by the church age believers. What a great man they are. We have been given in great possession of Ephesians 1.23. All in all, the player of Baltimore privileges. We are made strong. 1 John 4.4. 4. We are terrible, are we? That's the question we should ask. We should be the terrors to our enemies. Are we terrible to our enemy? Do you know how it could be terrible? Whenever you open up your mouth, it has to be the word of the Lord our God, seasoned with salt. Whenever we open up our mouth, it should be the divine oracles of the Lord's mind. We should be the gracious work where the word of the Lord our God calls for us. And being with wisdom, opening up our mouth. Therefore, dear brethren, whenever you open up your mouth by getting every thought into captivity for Christ, Satan certainly trembles. And how we have to be violent. Doesn't Christ, our Lord our God, say, Do you think I came to give peace? I came to send fire. Violent. Doing always that which is right and perfect in the sight of the Lord of our God is what our work is. What are the demands of the word of the Lord of our God that we have to prove violently so that the people should understand that by the deeds of us, like the way how Mother Teresa did, and the people should understand that we are the men in Christ asking for us to do our work in this pilgrimage trip. And every time you open up your mouth, Satan should tremble because these are violent preachers. And they are not just only the aliens and the terrifying ones. When they unsheath, they pour out. That is when they empty the entire word Deuteronomy 29, 29 into their minds. And when they unsheath the swords of them, the Karev of the Hebrew, which is to be sword, the resultant of that Karev is Karav, C-H-A-R-A-V, the only one alphabet in our English. From E to A, C-H-E-R-E-V is Karev, the sword, where they could have all mannerism of the thinking to tell, dagger or Philistine sword. But we have the Macaria sword, Ephesians, or Hebrews 4.12. So this Karev into Karav. The Karav is the condition which follows after the battle. That is Romans 16.20. But we haven't come to the battle either. Neither we are partaking in the battle of the word of the Lord our God. Ephesians 6.10-18. through 18. The unseen battle which goes on every day. In fact, indeed, every thought to be brought into the captivity for Christ. We are not able to do it. And what is it, the result of it? The sword which should be there when we unsheath the word of the Lord of our God. And when we unsheath the resultant of the battle, what it will be, will be always victory in Christ. He is a triumphant one. And he says in 2 Corinthians 2.14, Thanks be to the Lord of our God, who makes us to be triumphant at every place we go. So where we do this career on the sword, upon the loveliness of the wisdom, your pay, which meant to say the beauty of the wisdom of whom Satan. 
and what is the wisdom of the satan it wants for us like the way how the skeptic think because they will never find the wisdom that has been found in the fear of the lord of a god so we find over here the wisdom of them which is quite contrary to the lord's mind building up lies as your refuge but we are in the church of the lord of a god the gates of hell can never prevail over it and not only we shall make our swords upon the loveliness wisdom of satan but we shall also violate and the word calls to wound the self shining glory of satan and that's why satan trembles at you dear brethren that's why it cannot sleep it is an unsleeping fear the power given for us in the church age by the word of the lord of god not only making an attack upon the loveliness of the wisdom of satan but in fact indeed we also violate the shining of it and the word violate on the shining of it we shall wound the self show wisdom of satan when we expound it in the word of the lord of god the great caution of warning written by john to the seven historical trends of the churches in revelation apart from two churches every remaining five churches required exhortation and reproof apart from the things pertaining to romans and ephesians the seven letters written by apostle paul to the things pertaining to the great doctrinal edification when the letters of paul could be bought in the ephesians philippians and colossians and first second corinthians and romans apart from these two churches ephesians and romans couldn't get the exhortation because they were a doctrine of truth and the point what i want to tell the remaining five churches needed exhortation the remaining five churches in the terms pertaining to apostle paul in the book of revolution needed exhortation and by that i mean the 98% of the people who haven't thought the word of the lord of god to be number one priority in our pulpits certainly need to know the violation the wound that is occurring to them when jeremiah was been warned to tell you shall not be confused if not i shall confuse you so these people for which cause they have been kept by taking up their swords and destroying the lovely wisdom of this earth and showing them the right path of Christ like the aliens though we are but terrifying ones we shall wound the self will of this knowledge and teach to this world the right path and we know very well the world will not receive the truth but we are talking about the christendom at least let them wake up if you fear remember lord of a god the promise what he gave to jeremiah to say if you will think you are a little baby if you think you will be confused then remember lord of a god is going to confuse you a lot but stand faith i have believed i have spoken says the scripture so we should be for this great intensified stage of the angelic conflict the battle of eon members taking every day our sword the word of the lord of a god and the rima declaration of the pastor teaches what they teach every day though the flesh and heart may fail yet lord of a god is our strength think about these issues don't take it very lightly the burden laid down upon our shoulders is too large not just your filth of your moral sanctification that has been needed in the presence of this world we are called for virtue the highest the greatest and the best virtue of ever time that you could ever think of we have been called to look what is the importance of this virtue we have been called not just to march not just to walk in the spirit but to march and not only just to march like an army but we have been called like the terrifying ones being all powerful in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit though we are aliens being reserved and kept in eternity past for his work 
to the praise of his glory. Like aliens though we may be, yet we shall make a war upon the loveliness of the wisdom of this earth. And we shall make the wound upon the self-image of Satan's salvation. Though it's an unseen battle, every day you get into the thought of the Lord our God, remember that we have been kept in this church age, being prepared for his greatest revolution of all time and making our lives to understand that Christ our Lord our God before the foundation of the world has chosen us to his great work, to his great reality and demands that we shall unsheath the sword which we learn every day by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher teaching to you. The Rima declaration, the Nagad, where we read in the Hebrew as well, until and unless if there is no work of the pastor teacher to teach that, they shall not come to know what is the revolution. And he has to be from the head of the department of the church, not by men, neither by qualification of the men, nor by the filth of the translations of this man. But he has to be by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. And that has to be by the bona fide gift given for them for this work in the church age. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in comparison with Psalms 2022. And we shall learn how devil attacks upon the way which Robert Bunker Thieme thought in his book of Armageddon, in his appendix. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to link to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us, Christ, if you believe in Christ, you shall be saved. As for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond from my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in Willing Trinity, followed by Babylon in our hands, and number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, they will not worry about such nature, the entire of course will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a privilege it is for us to understand his guilt, 28 servant Father, according to thy will. Though we are being Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, you have called us to be the terrifying ones when we unsheath our, when we unsheath our sword by daily preparing in the word. Help us, Father, because the battle belongs unto thee, even the Michael angel said. Let Lord rebuke thee, but yet, O Lord, you have given for us this great privilege to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by becoming thy disciples. And to understand greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And walking in the fellowship of the truth, and causing us to understand the defeated fear, though is unsleeping, we should be more or less in completing our work for which cause you have been kept us alive on this earth. So, Father, in Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray that strengthen us according to thy word more and more, train us up according to the sword more and more, and be for thy glory. And see if there is an offensive in us, O oh Father, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Sovereign Lord. My Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these times. Amen.